talking. So the calendar shows that tomorrow, after today's lesson, we are going to take a pause to make darn sure that everyone has all the shapes and what we're doing today down packed. Okay. So we're going to do, unlike what I normally do, which is no uh, review day for a quiz, we're going to do a review day for the quiz tomorrow. Once that's completed, the only thing we're doing on Thursday is taking a quiz. That'll give me a chance at the very start to go over some questions. Thank you. Uh, if you need any help on it, and then we'll take the quiz, and that'll be it. I, I can't fathom why anyone would do poorly on this quiz, given the amount of preparation that we're thank you that we're going to do for this. Don't be that kid. There's always that kid. And you also get a calculator, and you also get a sheet of paper with all the formulas written on it. There is no reason on Thursday that I don't have nothing but straight A's on everyone in this class, right? You can all do that if you show up with your calculator, if you don't need a calculator today. Uh, if you, um, oh, actually, no, no, you do need a calculator today, sorry. Um, if you show up with a calculator and your resource card, you should be fine. If tomorrow when I hand out the worksheet, that you pay attention, you look at it, you ask questions, oh, this is the shape, it's still kicking my butt. All right, here we go. New stuff, copy down your homework. Some of these, uh, as we get towards the end of that, closer to the 12 there, are somewhat challenging. Seven through 12 are the challenging ones. Okay. Jane, put your mask on. Malachi, put your mask on. Riley, put your mask on. So put it on. There you go. All right. Here we go. Uh, think about this. Uh, some shapes, uh, for instance, a rectangle here, some shapes you can fold and the left side covers the right side, right? If this dotted line right here represented a fold line and we folded the right side or the left side over the other side over the fold line, it would completely cover the other side up. In fact, it would make a mirror image of both sides along that line right there. That's not the only way we could fold a rectangle. We could fold a rectangle from bottom to top and it would do that same thing. We can't fold a, a rectangle diagonally, okay? You fold it diagonally, uh, there's, no, there's no two same sides there, okay? All right, this idea of folding and where one side completely covers up, no overlap, uh, it completely, in other words, you make two equal sides, is called symmetry. That's what we're doing today, this idea of symmetry. So write this down, please, box one. Symmetry is when half of a shape is a mirror image of the other half. Now, mirror image means uh, you create two, two pieces that are exactly the same, right, please. That you create two pieces that are exactly the same. It's called mirror image because they don't actually look exactly like, they're flipped. The left side is a flipped image of the right side and vice versa. Rectangle is not a good example, but a triangle or equilateral triangle is a better example. Symmetry, when half of a shape, that dotted line represents where you're cutting in half. Okay, here's our example, our rectangle. That line right there represents where I cut the shape in half. And that the right side is a mirror image of the left side, right? That means that the this side would match up with this side. I'm touching right and left sides, uh, yours. Uh, rectangles have, have two ways that you can fold. There's only two ways to fold a rectangle. Are we going to have a repeat? OK, then stop. All right, uh, if you can fold a shape, stop. 
if you can fold a shape so that where you get mirror images, then we say that the shape is symmetrical. Okay. Not all shapes are symmetrical. Okay. Not all shapes are symmetrical. All right, so how do you determine symmetry? What you have to do is you have to figure out, is there a way to fold the shape so that you get two mirror images? So for instance, could we fold this top to bottom and get mirror images, right? If you folded this top to bottom, we would create two shapes. Like if I cut this along the dotted line right here, well, the top shape would be a triangle, but the bottom shape would be a trapezoid. a trapezoid. And clearly, and I did it in color here, Clearly, those two shapes are not mirror images of each other, right? They're not the same shapes. However, we could write down the middle, right? And we would get two shapes that are identical to each other, but they're not like lined up perfectly. This is why we call it a mirror image, right? If they were literally uh, lined up perfectly, it would look like that, right? But when we split it down the middle, it looks like that. That's why they're called mirror images. Yeah. Area is well, it's not perfect, but you get the idea. All right. Yes, Pierce. So for a rectangle, there's only two, but then doesn't that mean for a square, there's four technically? Well, there can be many. Right? Guess how many a circle has? Yeah. All right. So do all shapes have symmetry? And the answer is no. There are shapes that have no symmetry. Okay. Uh, for instance, does that shape have symmetry? Yeah. Yeah. Well, where? Cut it, down the right, cut it right down the middle. Okay, you you create two mirror images. Uh, does that shape have symmetry? Yeah. Yes. Actually, yes. Okay. So those saying yes, where? I'll cut yeah. it down. Cut right in the middle. <clears throat> horizontally. Cut it horizontally. Horizontally, right? If we cut it horizontally, but once again, you got to get this idea of mirror image. I didn't make two shapes that look exact. If I pulled them apart from each other, they don't look exactly alike. But if I flip one, then it becomes exactly like the other one. That's the mirror image portion of these. Other shapes have no. no symmetry, okay? So that line that we've been talking about, these dotted lines right here has a name, right? This down, box one. One, two. Box one, we're still box one. Two definitions, box one. It is called a line of symmetry. It's a line on a symmetrical shape that allows you, allows the shape to be folded onto itself. It's imaginary line, by the way, uh, but that's where you would fold the shape so that the two sides match up. Line of symmetry, line of symmetry. Not too hard of a class today. Complete the last part. Last part is the butt kicker. Okay, everybody? A line on a symmetrical shape that allows the shape to be folded onto itself. It's basically the fold line for symmetrical shapes. There is a whole branch of mathematics and uh, mm, believe it or not, uh, in the space industry that deals with folding things, really? right? Uh, because uh, it takes, um, uh, a lot of energy to put things into outer space, right? We want to, our scientists and engineers would like things to be folded so that they can go into outer space. The smaller the space, the more stuff they can put on the rocket. So there's actual people whose job is to fold things or to design things that can be folded into the smallest possible shape. It's basically origami for adults, okay? And they get paid a lot of money. For instance, when you look at the International Space Station, uh, it has these huge solar panels. I mean, they're huge, football field size. We don't have a rocket that, that's big enough to send that in outer space. So somebody had to figure out a way of folding those things up into a really tiny space so we can shoot it off into outer space and then unfold it and it turns into a big giant solar cell, okay? All right. Uh, so yeah, those dotted lines right there are the lines of symmetry. Uh, if you can draw a line of symmetry, then we say that the, the shape is symmetric, okay? Um, some have more, and this one has two lines of symmetry. Some have lots, some have an infinite, surplus infinite. 
All right, so first game is the easiest game of the day, right? It takes you all of about, I don't know, a half a second to do this. I show you a shape and you draw the lines of symmetry, line or lines of symmetry. It is really that simple. So here we go, box three. Uh, we'll come back to it. Uh, box three, draw the line of symmetry or lines of symmetry. Ben, sunglasses or regular glasses? Well, then take them off, please. Say again. Oh, okay, I got you. All right, how many lines of symmetry? Upper left, trapezoid. One line of symmetry. And it would go? Straight down the middle. Straight down the middle. There we go. All right, uh, arrow? Straight horizontally. Not straight down the middle? Nope. Not like that? Nope. So horizontal? Yep. Yeah. There's your line of symmetry. Rectangle? Yeah. We've already seen that one. There are two of them. There's three of them. Okay, if you think there are three, right in front of you is a rectangle. Fold it along the third one, see if the left side covers the right side. Hold it, hold it your third way. On the first that see it doesn't cut you would think that you can now for a Pierce had already said it for a square could you fold it diagonal it has yes. to be yeah you can so right not always right because we have uh, uh, some some weird shapes yeah we'll find out you've got a rectangle in front of you right now do that fold it the way that you just said see if the left side covers the right side it doesn't well, remember the line represents where you would cut it. Would it be equal equal sizes? I don't know. Figure it out. I mean, try it. All right. Uh, how about this double arrow? Uh, vertical and horizontal. Vertical and horizontal. So this one has two. Yeah. Um, what if we had like an open shape, like not a finished shape? An open shape? Yeah. So like the. And we're gonna do that next. Yet. We'll do it next. Okay. Uh, Malachi uh, is, is having issues with the fact that if we take a rectangle and we cut it along the diagonal, we do in fact make two triangles that are exactly the same. But remember the definition says when it's folded, it makes two equal. And that part is the part that doesn't work. Okay? But he is correct by saying that if we cut along a diagonal, we do make two triangles that are exactly the same. But unfortunately, our definition of symmetry doesn't include that. All right, so his idea is what happens if you have open shapes, right? We would call this concave shape right here, yeah. the H, right? And the S is concave, and the A is concave, and the E is concave, all right? Those are all concave shapes. Um, all right, so the question is, do letters have symmetry? Yes. Uh, how about the S? Does it have symmetry? No. no. Could you yes. fold it so that it would match up? No. Yes. Show me. Fold, how would you fold it? Okay, so you're saying if I throw that up there that it matches up perfectly? No. It does. No, it doesn't. Well, I don't get to flip it. I only get to fold it. Okay. We're talking about, uh, well, uh, I don't want to spoil the, the idea. Straight vertically, straight vertically. How about H? Yeah. Yes. Which way? Right. Vertical right. And horizontal. And vertically and horizontal. How about A? Uh, vertical. vertical. How about P? No. no. How about E? Horizontal. Okay, so easy. So even letters have symmetry to them. So what some people have been trying to wrap their head around is what Malachi kind of brought up. There's something going on, maybe another type of symmetry, because this certainly the letter S kind of looks like there's something going on. P, there's nothing going on there, but the S, it kind of matches up. But it wouldn't be done by folding, it would be done by flipping. Well, not even flipping, but rotating. rotating, right? Rotating. All right, we'll talk about that here next. All right, box five, real quick, all by yourself. Lines of symmetry, line or lines of symmetry. Or no lines. Or no lines. On number nine, do we have to fold the circle itself or the oval in it? Uh, the whole thing. No, that's never going to work. Because it's just so fresh. Is it? Is the 
Like no, it's it's a two dimensional shape. So it's a circle with two ellipses drawn on the inside. Mm -hmm. Make it look like a square. Does a circle have to like infinite? It does. So I could just draw a bunch of lines and I'm done. Except for nine, it's got more to it than just a circle. If nine was just a circle, then it would be infinite. But it's not just a circle. It's a circle with two ellipses. Oh. All right, Gavin, uh, number one, how many? One. Which way? Straight down. Straight down. All right, Elijah, number two? Uh, Which way? Straight down. Straight down? He like, like that. Yep. All right, so Abby wants to say that, wait a minute, if it's equilateral. Go ahead. Can I also go from uh, one side to the other? Really, yeah, three. 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 Right. Number one has three, because it's equilateral. All the sides and all the angles are the same. Ace, you want the square? Uh, no. On number two on ours, it's unfinished. The, the half circle. Well, it says semicircle. That's a half a circle. No, Wait, like I've there's missing. Like the missing. That's why I asked oh, oh, no, that just came, it printed badly. Uh, I thought, that's why I asked if we were doing open got shapes. I got you. I got you. Yeah. It's okay. We'll get there. All right. Uh, what are we on? Ace number three? Yes. How many? Four. I uh, not four. Um, two. Not two. Three. Well, there's let's four. see. There's Wait, one. Wait, no, it is four. Yeah, yeah. There's two. Where's the other ones? Uh, Diagonal. There's three. Oh, and then there's four. So is there any more? No, it's four. All right. Four. Noah, number four. Okay, which way? So he says, uh, uh, this looks to be like a lemon or yeah. something. All right, number one, and then number two. Okay, very good. All right, Lily, what are, this weird looking thing? I don't think it has any either. There's no way that you can fold it so that uh, you create two, uh, that uh, one side covers up the other side. So five has none. All right, this is not the same thing. So the equilateral triangle had three. Riley, what do you think for this triangle? It's an isosceles, by the way. Straight down the middle. Is there anything else? That's it. So isosceles has one. Okay. Uh, I have no idea what this composite shape is made up of. Pac-Man. It's a flag. It's made up. It's a pennant, right? By the way, there's only one state in the United States that doesn't have a flag, and that is? Ohio. Because it has a? It has what's called a pennant, right? Uh, this is not necessarily a pennant shape. Pennant shapes are more like this, right? Kind of tapers in, but Ohio is the only state that doesn't have a flag. Why? Because they have a pennant. So they can be special if they want. I, I do not know why they have a pennant and not a flag. But... They can be special if they want. All right. Not uh, How many states begin and end with the same letter? Ohio. I know, that's oh. I have one. Uh, there are others. Such as I'm gonna get Ohio, Alaska, Alaska Arizona. 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 America. I got three of them. America. America is not a state. Yes, it is. It's a state in my book. Okay. California. Alabama. Texas. Oh, California. States. Washington, D.C. <laughs> Uh, any other more than close four? Is Colorado. Ones? What do you got? Arkansas ends in an S. S. Wisconsin. Yeah. Oh, I was just gonna say for number seven, Lenape, Hold on, let's go. We'll go off what this tangent. Let's finish this. All right. Uh, so there may be more, but those are the four that I can think of off the top of my head. Uh, it is a. Um, it is also a, um, a strange uh, bit of trivia that all the continents begin and end with the same letter. North America. America. Europe. Africa. Australia. Antarctica. Asia. They all begin and end with it. I got you. I got you. Europe. Europe. Russia. Begins and ends with an E. Okay. Oh, I thought you meant like they're all A's. America is named after who? Uh, Christopher Columbus. Yeah. What is America named after? 
Johnson. And that's both both North and South America, named after the explorer. Where do you get America from Christopher Columbus? It's Christopher America. If you guys had been here for K through at least through five, you would know that America is named after a guy named America is named after Amerigo Vespucci, right? and he was uh, an explorer, and literally that's what both two continents are named after. One dude, Amerigo Vespucci, he gets two continents. Do not know the answer to that one. All right, off of our tangents. Quite please. Okay, we left off with the pennant. The pennant has how many? It has one. X has has eight. Well, let's see. It has one, two, three. And four. And lastly, the, the the circle with the two Wait, ellipses please, has please. what? All right, it's a lot. Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four. No, I'm counting still. Five, six, seven, eight. All right. Well, let's see if he's right. Well, clearly, there's one. There's two. What else? Diagonals. Three, four. Where's the rest? In the middle box. So it has four as well, too. Yeah. So not more eight. than four. No, it's eight. Where where are the others? <laughs> hey, the Ace. Stop. Uh, no. All right. Why please? Say again. I, I can't hear a word you're saying. Put the mirror away. In your bag. Oh, I just love it. I'm not going to see him talking in his stupid hair. All right. All right. Uh, there's a but here, and the but here is that, listen, please, that symmetry comes in many flavors. We've only seen one type, which is, which is, which is called reflectional symmetry, right? Uh, here is a second type of symmetry. All right. This shape has no lines of symmetry, okay? This shape has no lines of symmetry, yet we kind of get the feeling that I could somehow match the left side with the right side by, by what? By sliding it over, it wouldn't match. If I flipping it, it wouldn't match. But if I, it still wouldn't match. If I slide it to the right, this comes over here, it doesn't match up with anything. However, if I rotate it about the center, right, it would perfectly match. Let me see that again. If we rotate it, we wind up with exactly the same shape. So this is a different form of symmetry. Write this down, please, by six. This is called point symmetry. Point symmetry is where every part has a matching part the same but opposite distance from a given point. Okay. Things that have point symmetry. Here's the point. You pick a point, let's say this one right here. It says it has the same point just in the opposite direction. So if we go in an opposite direction through the point, we wind up right over here. That's the same distance. And it's the same thing, except it's been moved. Anything, or any point along the shape that if I go through the center, I wind up with a duplicate point on the other side. That's just not the edges, that's not the corner. I can go through the middle right here as well too. If I go through that point to the opposite side, I get a duplicate point. That's the idea. Most people, however, think of point symmetry as, as rotational symmetry. Okay, We'll write that as well, too, in a second. But most people think about point symmetry more in terms of, I'm just rotating an object. 
If you can rotate an object and you get back to the same shape, we say it has point symmetry. Now here's a kicker, look at me. Any shape can be turned 360 degrees and you get back to the same, same shape, right? So it's just not that you have point symmetry if you can turn it, because I can turn any shape 360 degrees. It's if you can turn it 180 degrees or less and you can get back to the same shape, then we get what's called point symmetry. If you could turn it 180 degrees or less and you get back to the, what you started with, right? Hey, here's 90 degrees. Is that the same shape? Yes. No. This is the shape. If I turn it 90 degrees, is it the same shape? No. no. But if I turn it 180 degrees or less, I end up with the, the same shape. Some shapes you can turn 37 degrees and you get back to the same shape. Other shapes you have to turn 90 or 180. But all shapes, if you turn 360, get back to the same shape. No, it is. All right. So all shapes, you can turn 360. So we don't say that all shapes have point symmetry. But if the shape can be turned 180 degrees or less, and you get back to the same shape, we say it has point symmetry. Rotational symmetry is kind of what most people think about. All right, so back to the same shapes that we just did. Can you turn by, uh, the shape in uh, question number one there and get back to the same shape in 180 degrees or less? Can you take an equilateral triangle and twist it, turn it, and get back to the same shape? Yeah. In less than 180 degrees or 180 degrees or less? No. Sure. You just got to turn this one a third of a turn and it gets back to the same shape. Yes? Okay. How about this one? How many degrees would you have to turn it to get back to the same shape? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have point symmetry. How about the squares? I do have to turn it. 90, 90. 90 degrees. So this one, it's got to be 180 degrees or less. So Yes, no, yes. How about this one? Do you have to turn it more than 180 degrees to get back to the same shape? No. If, here's the shape. If I turn it 180 degrees, is it the same or different? Same. So it has point symmetry. How about this one? Yes. 180. 180. And, and, and next year in algebra one and geometry, we will ask for the actual degrees. This year, it's just a yes or no question. Does it have point symmetry? So this one, yes, right? How about the isosceles triangle? No. So therefore, the answer is, the answer is no. Why is that different than equilateral? Because the equilateral, all the sides are the same, all the angles are the same. I just need to turn this what a third of three hundred sixty degrees, and I get back to the same same triangle. How about the pennant? How many degrees? You turn it ninety. Does it look like this? Excuse me. Uh, so you're saying that I can take this and turn it 90 degrees and it looks exactly the same. You don't get that as an option. You have to turn the shapes. Sorry, Chris. All right. All right. Uh, how about the X? Yes. Uh, and like I said, this year we're not going to specifically ask how many degrees. But clearly, we can turn this one. Yeah, I think it's about 90 degrees. We would get back to exactly the same thing. Now, be careful. They will try to trick you. They will make one of these sides like that, right? Without the triangle on the top. How many does this one have point symmetry now? No. no. You have to turn it 360 degrees to get back to that shape. So be careful. Some of the ones that look like it might have uh, rotation or point symmetry don't. How about the uh, circle? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that was 90 degrees as well, too. No, you don't have to turn it one degree. No, if you turn it one degree, then this part will be over here, and it won't match up perfectly. It's got to match up so that it looks visually exactly the what you started with. All right. So what's this good for? Okay, these are good kind of cool things. It's got this thing. It's pretty easy to do. It's yes or no, drawing little lines. Yeah, homework is a bit more complicated than that. Okay. The last class we figured out or we finished up with these things called composite shapes. Those are shapes made up of two or more different shapes and you had to calculate the area. It turns out that when things have symmetry, either normal symmetry, lines of symmetry or point symmetry, it can help us calculate uh, uh, area of composite shapes. So let's see how that works. Hey, these are butt kickers, each and every one of those. So you need to stay with me. 
Okay, you ready? We're only gonna do one example, okay? All right, so clearly this one has point symmetry right at the center. So here's the shape, okay? Do you see it? Box eight. I, I'm sorry, we're gonna do two examples, okay? Do you see the shape? Yeah. It has point symmetry right here. If it's symmetrical, that means that you end, wind up with pieces that are exactly like the other ones. Even though the shape itself, we don't have a name for it, right? Because it's symmetrical, point symmetry here, that means we have two equal pieces. I've got this piece right here, the top part, upper right, and I've got the lower part. If you put those two pieces together because it's symmetrical, what shape do you make? A circle. You make a circle. Can you see that? If we, if we cut along this line right here and put the two pieces together, you get one circle. So when you do this area, that's what you have to figure out. You have to figure out, well, if we put the pieces together, what would we make? Sometimes it's, this was the easiest one of all because it just makes one circle. Second one is a big butt kicker. The problem with symmetrical shapes is sometimes the numbers that they give you uh, make it a little bit more challenging to figure out what you need to do. This one's not bad. Okay. Well, how many circles did we say we made here? One. What's the radius? Eight. You see what I mean? This one's not too bad. Okay. So when they say calculate the area of this, you're like, well, I don't have a formula for area of a propeller looking thing, <laughs> right? You're right, you don't. But because it's symmetrical, because we know that we take the two symmetrical pieces and put them together, we make one circle, it ends up being for this one, not too bad. So all I have to do is take the two half circles and put them together. But wait a minute, two half circles make, circle. make one circle. What's the form of our area of a circle? A equals pi r squared. So that's all we need. And by the way, we already said that the radius was? Eight. Okay, let's do it. Hey, what does it say? What does it say? That means we're not multiplying by 3.14. We're leaving the pi symbol. We are not multiplying by pi. We're just leaving the pi symbol. Okay, so what's the radius here? Um, A equals pi of 201. What? Well, like it's 201. 201? Where are you getting 201 from? <laughs> Uh, you said the radius was eight. What do we have to do with eight? Multiply the times pi times the squared. Okay, the part where I said we're leaving it in terms of pi, you didn't hear that, did you? Okay. So what's the only thing we have to do here? Uh, we got to square it. So what's the answer? Literally, you're done. I'm like, like, really, I'm done. Well, put the units. What are the units? Centimeters squared, and you're done. Okay. All right, who's lost in what I just did? All right, we start with a shape. It's going to be, there's no nice, friendly shapes. They're all going to be weird looking. You have to figure out what's the symmetry here. The symmetry will tell you what pieces that you have that you put together to make your composite shape. Yeah. Oh, you see, why did you put that two? Because how many, there's one circle, but it's made up of two half circles, right? Uh, some people wouldn't even even written this. They would say, oh, there's just one circle and go right from there. But they're actually thinking this through. Yeah. Why do you, why would you um, leave the, it in like terms of pi? Then so it's, it's hard to understand this for seventh graders, but it turns out as we go into high school, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, pre-calculus, calculus, we do lots of calculations where we want an exact answer. I don't want approximate. I want exactly what the answer when you get the when you change pi into a rounded number, you're not getting the real answer. You're getting a number that's close. And what happens in higher level math is that we can actually sometimes cancel things when we're doing a lot of different math, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. So we like to never change pi into an approximation until the very end. So what they're doing in seventh grade are getting you used to the idea that sometimes you leave your answer with a pi in it, okay? And the only, only at this level, the only uh, explanation I can give you is that eventually it's gonna make your life a whole lot easier, okay? So uh, we like that one because it means less math to do. It also means if you're doing it by hand, it's pretty easy. All I did was square eight and I was done. Elijah, go outside, please. 
you're next. Okay, this is the hardest one. And I know that every year that I teach this for some seventh graders, if your concentration is low, you won't get this. So I need you to turn the switch to high speed thinking and let's get through this one. Okay, you ready? Is everybody yeah. thinking? All right, here we go. Looks like an S to me backwards, right? We don't have a formula for area of an S, yes, we right? Do. We don't have a formula for it's area just, of an S. It's just, okay. Exactly. So what you have to do and what this section was about is, well, this is basically the same shape right here, except it's not the whole darn thing. And this shape basically was a circle. So the question is, well, where's the circle? I don't see any circles there. What do you got, Ben? If we did point symmetry and then shifted either the top to the right or the bottom to the left, either one, what would we get? We would get that thing, a donut. Hey, once again, I don't have a formula for area of a donut, right? It's actually a washer, but not a donut. Donuts three dimensions, right? So we get this washer shape. I don't have a formula for that. Ben, you're going to disagree? What? Uh, you could treat it like a circle, and then when you get your area, calculate the area of the white part and subtract it. Okay. So in math, this is a tried and true technique called big circle minus middle circle. Okay. You're going to see this so many times in math, right? When there's a, a something hollowed out, it's the big shape minus the little shape. We can do that, right? So we have a formula now. The issue is I need numbers, right? So how do I admit, make these numbers onto this shape? Okay. Gavin, what do you think? Well, or can't you just take the what's in the center and make that and then split it into half and do it two and four? Say that one more time. Can't you take the four and split it in half so you get your radius and then you split how you want? So are you talking about for the big circle or the little circle? The little circle. So the little circle has a radius of two. Where are you getting the two from? Half of four, right? So yes. So I'm not saying you have to write that, but if we were literally to take these numbers and just shift them over to this one, it would look like that. All I did was take those numbers and move them over. But Ben said we're doing big circle minus little circle. And here's where it becomes complicated. Is everybody thinking? Yeah. What's the radius of the big circle? Oh, four. four. Where are you getting a four from? Yeah, it two in the four. So usually a seventh grader will say, well, two plus four is six, but this four was all the way across the little one. Remember, if I drew this line of symmetry right here, that would break up the big circle into what we need, which is the radius. That's the radius of the big circle. Well, clearly that's two. If this whole thing across is four, then this little piece is two as well, too. Did I lose anyone? Yes? Yeah. Okay. Can you picture the big circle? Right? So we want, here's the big circle. We want the radius of the big circle. Well, the radius of the big circle, if I start over here, how far did I just go? Two. Well, then how far did I go now? So from here all the way over to here, little circle, it has a diameter of four. That means the radius of the little one is also is two. That's where the four comes from. Okay, so we get a radius of the big circle of being four. What's the radius of the little circle? Two. He said two. Do you agree or disagree? Agree. All right. That's everything. I mean, that's a lot of work. We still haven't even remotely got to the answer. That's just figuring out numbers. So this is what the problem will look like tonight for homework. It's even going to be harder than that. Okay. What you need to do, grab your pencils and your pens. Now let's do the calculation. Notice it says leave in terms of pi. What some of you might have to do, I'm not saying everyone, but some of you may have to redraw the shape, okay? For you to figure out that what you're really doing is big circle minus little circle. Well, a circle is pi r squared. So we're doing pi r squared of the big circle minus pi r squared of the little circle. Without pi though. No, we're going to leave pi. We're just not going to multiply by pi. You gotta have pi in the formula. Yeah. We're just not going to multiply by it, okay? You said that the radius of the big circle was? Okay. 
Was what? Four. Was four. Now, occasionally, I'll get kids, they'll say, well, it's four because this number here is four. No, the radius of the big circle isn't four because this number is four. It's because from here to here is four. Two plus this is two, and that's two. Because half of four is two, correct. And then what I'll get a seventh grade uh, typical problem is that they'll lose their brains right here and they'll think that four squared is eight because they'll be doing four times two. Not four times two, it's four times four times four, four written twice. Well, that's 16. Two squared is, is four. You want to see the magic and why you don't need a calculator? It's 16 minus four. Wow. No calculator necessary. Uh, tonight there might be, because the math might be a little bit strange for some of them. Wait, what do you have to put units? We do. We would have to put units squared. Okay. So we would get 12 pi units squared. Hegan. We had a conversation yesterday. We, we polled all the teachers and we said, which teacher's class does Keegan not sleep in? And no one raised their hand. I thought it was just me because it's first period, but it turns out it's all your teachers. You need to stay away. All right. Uh, by the way, this is the visualization that you would have to do for some of you. Some people can do that whole visualization in their head. Other people need to draw that and label the numbers in order for them to get an idea of what's going on. I said we were only doing two examples. We just did two examples. I'm going to say 7 through 12. You want to open up your books right now. Right, we can talk about it. Open up your books, give me a second. Open up your books and we'll talk about it in the way class. Seven? Yeah, well, okay. really or the ones that are hard. Yeah, All right, now guys, think of which one we want to do before we do it. Undercut. Well, we really only have time to do one. Maybe nine. Oh, my All right, let's do number nine. Yeah. Number nine. Number nine is a composite shape made up of what? Oh my God, two ovals. Oh. I thought it was the arrowhead thing. Oh, no, number nine. That's classic. Oh, number nine. Oh, they're just abstract. So we have this. Help me out. Which way does this one go? Uh, like this. Is that right? Uh, other and way. And then like this. Other way. And then like this. All right, close enough. Uh, oh, okay. All right. So that's the basic shape. Hey, uh, all of those have what? They all have a radius of five. So how many circles do we have here? <laughs> Two. Two. All of them with a diameter of 10. All of them with a, well, do we need radius or diameter? Uh, radius, but. So you have two say. circles with a radius of five. So what's the formula? Oh, uh, pi, a, five. Not pi. A equals How many circles five. do you have? Two. So I have two. Pi, five. Boom. Oh, and doesn't it say leave in terms of pi? Uh, so we can do this in our head. Five squared is ten. Not ten. Times two. Pi. You're done. The hardest thing will be looking at the shapes and trying to, you know, put it together in your head. The circle ones are actually the easier ones since that's the one we did the most examples of. Okay, there's your one. Merry Christmas. All right, any e-learners online right now? We will pick back up with calculators tomorrow. So there's not necessary to, today was not a necessary, even though Keegan brought his calculator because I talked to his brother and his brother was supposed to, he didn't bring his calculator, did he? Did, is that your brother's or yours? Nice. That's a good one too.